Um, Distribox is a really cool project. Like when I first heard about this, thank you. I, I like I knew about things like Docker and I'd used that before. I hadn't used Podman before, but like I'd used Docker. I just never really thought of using it as this. But actually, for anyone who doesn't know, it just explain briefly what Distribox is. It's a <clears throat> a wrapper around Podman or Docker, so uh, free to choose, and. Instead of using containers to isolate workflows and workloads, it creates containers that are tightly integrated, so the completely opposite. And um, yeah, mainly gives you a user land of whatever nature you want, so mm -hmm. whatever distro you want, um, so that it decap decouples the user land from the uh, base distro that you have on your host or your laptop, your desktop. Where you can do your stuff. So mm -hmm. you can install packages, you can develop, you can do games, whatever. Uh, the important bit is the tight integration and the possibility of you know leveraging, I don't know, your graphical session, audio and I don't know, USB devices, stuff like that, mm -hmm. so that it doesn't feel like a container, it feels more like a fancy stage room or mm. something like that. Yeah, the idea I... was to go. Yeah. Uh, what I was, I was going to say, I, when I first saw, I sort of thought of it as like a kind of like a Linux subsystem for Linux. You know how like Windows subsystem for yeah. Linux is you have this Linux thing running on top of Windows. It's tightly integrated. You can modify your files from your Windows system. Here, you can do the same thing. So you're on like uh, Debian, for example, and you want to install an application from the AUR and then access all your Debian files. You could just do that. Yeah, basically the same as WSL or I think it's called Crostini on uh, Chrome OS. Mm -hmm their Linux subsystem VM. So instead of being of using VMs, in this case, we are just using plain containers. Mm -hmm. So performance are definitely better. Um, yeah, so the idea was that um, it's not that different than simply doing you know, a CH root because mm -hmm. I am basically undoing all the um, I, um, compartmentalization and isolation that Podman Docker does by default. Mm -hmm. um, but the idea was to leverage their infrastructure. So uh, they have so many images, so I mean, so many cool things that you can use. Um, just you know, starting from simple CH roots was just more work at that point. It mm -hmm. was easier to just reintegrate the Docker. So went that way and yeah uh, it's useful for you know various situation uh personally it, it was born because i needed it so right well i was gonna ask you why <laughs> why you made it like what specific thing was it that caused you to want to go make this mm -hmm. i was working for a company where they they gave me uh you know a company laptop mm. i asked for a linux laptop and uh they actually gave me one, but then you cannot be pseudo because policies, you cannot do this, you cannot do that. Mm, it was like an Ubuntu, I think 18.04, but it was in 2020. So ancient stuff. Mm -hmm. And at one point I just needed to work. Right. <laughs> so um, I started with simple containers, then no, one thing leads to another, and here we are. And, <laughs> well, one of the things that I, I always found, like, weird about the project, and it makes sense, like, at, at some level, but, like, the fact that it's all done in Bash script. So, I'm sure people have mentioned this, POSIX like... POSIX shell. Okay, <laughs> sorry, POSIX shell. It's different. <laughs> sorry. It's... It's uh, harder. <laughs> that's, that's actually a fair point. Okay. <laughs> why did you want to do it in POSIX shell? And said, like, you know, a lot of people would suggest why not use a common glue language like Python or Perl or something like that. Obviously, doing something <clears throat> like C wouldn't make any sense because you're basically just making Docker and Podman calls. But why not something that's like an actual programming language? 
two reasons actually. Mm. Uh, one is the fact that it needs to run without depend, uh, except for obviously Podman and Docker, sure. needs to run without dependencies anywhere because we um if you see how this box is structured you have various pieces mm -hmm. so you have various utilities then you have like the init which is actually like the init all that we inject inside the container which runs uh at the startup of the container mm -hmm. and do does like ev everything <laughs> let's say that one needs to <clears throat> only run on POSIX stuff because it may have to run on a container that only has POSIX stuff. Let's say Alpine or Void mm -hmm. Linux or Gen2, Gen2, Gen2. And <clears throat> I even support Slackware. So, I mean, it's, uh, it, it, I don't know who uses it, but yeah, <laughs> it needs to run on, you know, very lean uh, stuff. And in the end, the init is the biggest part of the whole project mm -hmm. and the most difficult part for me, I think. And uh, the others are pretty much smaller utilities, you know, mm -hmm. um, list, RM, uh, I don't know, start, stop, it's very small scripts. Mm -hmm. um, create and enter are a, a, a bit bigger, but just because we give some, you know, flags, some interactivity, some options. Mm -hmm. It's verbose, not difficult. It, it's long, not difficult. Mm -hmm. The init is difficult because you have so many things to do. Right. To do that integration. And so many things to keep an eye on because, I don't know, a fix on Ubuntu can break something on Alpine. You know? Right. It it happened, actually, and um, then at the support for you know init full system like system D, um, open RC actually it's supported. Uh, it makes obviously difficult, but I wanted something that can run on anything. Mm -hmm. I didn't want any library hell, so. That's uh, one big reason. And uh, I wanted something that was fast interactive and easy to contribute to. Mm -hmm. And in hindsight, probably Golang will be a little bit better in some ways. Mm -hmm. uh, not for the init, right? Because that needs to be, you know, a simple shell entry point to be fully compatible with everyone. Mm -hmm. But then again, if that is the most difficult part and it's done in shell, I may as well do the rest in shell. So Right. So a net is the thing that actually takes your Docker or Podman container and then makes it this thing that's tightly integrated. Uh, yeah, so there are two phases. In the create, we do some you know, fancy mounts. Like uh, the key mounts is obviously is running the whole root of the of the host <laughs> inside run and host run host inside the container. So <laughs> everything is still uh, accessible inside the container. <laughs> then the init is actually like PID one of the container. So it's like literally an init, <laughs> and <clears throat> what it does is setting up, you know, the TTY devices, setting up all the various mounts that are needed at runtime, um, setting up, I don't know, stuff like ATC host, resolve.conf, all the integration part. And it has, you know, pre and post hooks, so you can customize a bit your, your init process, integrates the I don't know, icons, fonts, and stuff like that with the host. Mm -hmm. And then it either stops there <laughs> and, you know, just waits so you can do connection to it, mm -hmm. or it starts another init. So either systemd or uh, openrc, uh, never tried s6, but I mean, stuff like that. And um, yeah, it's 
more or less the the init in the real sense of the word. <laughs> right. 